I mean, if you look at what the EPA puts out, they say we spend about, Americans spend about 90% of our time indoors. Uh, that, that is something that we don't realize and um, we need to uh, focus. Hello everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. Today we'll be discussing mold advocacy, policy reform, and civic engagement with State Representative Joe Miller and our very own Brandon Chapo. So thank you so much for being here. Glad to be here. Thanks for having us. Now, for those who may not know, State Representative Joe Miller represents the 56th District in Ohio House of Representatives. Representative Miller is the primary sponsor of Ohio House Bill 251, the Ohio Indoor Safe Air Act, which aims to create an indoor mold program through the Ohio Department of Health. Now, Rep. Miller is an indoor air quality champion, but he's also a passionate advocate for quality education, jobs for hardworking Ohioans, opportunities for green energy expansion, and assistance to our veterans. Now, Brandon Chapo is a co-founder of Change the Air, and he's our director of public policy. Now, these are two very busy people, so I want to thank you both once again for taking time to speak with me today. Glad to be here. Thank you again. Thanks, Kendra. Um, now, Brandon, can you give us a brief overview of how living in a water damaged building affected your health and why you felt reaching out to your elected officials and representatives to advocate was so important? Yeah, that's a great question. Thanks, Kendra. Uh, my journey with mold and water damage started a few years ago, and I was living in a rental in Cleveland, Ohio, which is my home state and hometown. And uh, after a year of living there, I started to have some really severe, um, mysterious symptoms that I hadn't experienced before. Just to give a little bit of background, I was formerly an air traffic control specialist with the FAA, and I had to hold a class two uh, airman medical cer certificate for that. And that meant that we had to have a really clean bill of health. So after a year of living in this uh, rental, I started to have uh, dizziness and fatigue, and I was having cognitive issues, insomnia. Uh, gastrointestinal issues, very highly unusual for me, uh, given my position, started to go to the uh, Cleveland Clinic, world, world renowned Cleveland Clinic in my backyard, and University Hospital specialist after specialist, um, all of the imaging, all of the testing was coming back normal, nobody could quite figure it out. After a year living there, uh, my health had never been worse, frankly. And I finally got a tip from a close friend who said, why don't you see a, a, a specialist in functional medicine at the Cleveland Clinic? And after a few questions with the physician there, she asked me something that no other doctor had asked the entire year beforehand, which was, Brandon, why don't you tell me about the place you've been living in since 2018? And I told her about it. And she said, any musty odors, any leaks, any areas of water intrusion that you've ever noticed? And I said, well, yeah, down in the basement you know, all the time. And I'll never forget it. She stopped typing her notes and she looked at me and she said, so tell me why this isn't a good story for mold. And I was shocked by that um, response. And she said, Brandon, we treat patients here at our functional medicine department for what you're going through almost every day. And that, that changed my entire outlook of how our health is intersected with our homes. I quickly uh, began to look to see if there were other Ohioans, uh, individuals and families that had been affected. There were countless. Um, I was alarmed by that, a bit dismayed. I went to the Ohio Department of Health website. They had very little information on it and uh, looked into the Ohio Revised Code, which is the law in Ohio, and there was barely anything to speak of it. So my background um, in government and history uh, that my bachelor's is in, I thought to myself, I'd like to go to my representatives and staffers uh, to see if I can at least bring this up and speak to them and educate them. And lo and behold, we hit the jackpot and Representative Joe Miller and his staffer at the time were in the district that I had to move back into after I had to leave the building, brought forward this uh, issue, what had happened to me how there was a lack of oversight or just a lack of needed attention on this. And uh, luckily, uh, Representative Miller answered the call for us. I mean, and we're so grateful because I know you said you reached out to a lot of people and a lot of reporters and things like that. Yeah. And if it weren't for Representative Miller heeding your call, um, you know, it could be a very different story. So yeah. that's a perfect subway. 
Representative Miller, our community is so grateful for you for being a champion for the underserved public health issue that has affected so many of us, myself included. So what made you decide to take this on in Ohio to create an indoor mold program through the Department of Health? So I think one of the things is, Brandon, of course, you, you see his uh, passion about this and his energy for this issue. Uh, but whenever, whenever our office is approached by any constituent, you know, we serve about 125,000 constituents in this, each of our districts on average. And, uh, you know, we get calls in the office for a variety of things. Um, and some <clears throat> may appear very small to, to some. And to, to others, it's a, it's a major issue and it's a major impact on people. This met all those criteria. And the funny issue is, I guess it's not as funny as we'd love it to be, but you know, this is not something that's just Brandon um, only. This isn't anecdotal. This is happening to hundreds and hundreds of people across the state, maybe even probably thousands that we don't know about. And my even my uh, former legislative aide who, uh, uh, who, who went to uh, college there in Ohio State and lived in a place that had mold. And once she left, she's like, my health got so much better. So she even understood the impact of poor air, indoor air quality. And that's something that I don't think we, we think about. So when, that's, when any issue is brought to, to our office attention, we're going to give it its due diligence, do what we can to find a solution Sometimes that's just helping government, uh, you know, helping people work through government channels. And other times it's, and especially in this case, it's, it's writing legislation that will help mitigate, improve people's lives, mitigate the issue, and uh, give opportunity for Ohioans to live in a more safe and healthy place. So it was an easy, it was an easy um, decision. Uh, it just, legislation is not easy. So people have to understand that, that trying to find the right balance of, of writing policy and guidelines between the departments is really um, one of the more challenging parts of this job. Yeah, and I have kind of a follow-up question to that. So when we talk about indoor air quality it, as an issue, do you think that it lacks the necessary attention that it deserves? And, and why do you think that further legislation and regulations can help address it moving forward? So, I mean, if you look at what the EPA puts out, they say we spend about, Americans spend about 90% of our time indoors. Um, I believe that, especially up here north, maybe not in the nicer weather climate, weather people may spend more time outside. But here in Ohio, we probably spend 90% of our time indoors uh, for various reasons. And, you know, these indoor air quality is sometimes like two to five times higher than your typical outdoor uh, concentration. So if there's poor air quality, you're going to get it in a more um, dense concentration, and therefore it's going to have such uh, a negative impact on you and your health. So <clears throat> for us, that's I think that uh, that that is something that we don't realize, and um, we need to uh, focus uh, on how we can at least educate. At minimum, minimum, I always say you know make make government transparent and people uh, more educated as to what's going on, and we'll have more success uh, finding happiness and healthiness here in Ohio. I, I love that. So it's about helping the you know people of Ohio or, or even across the country become more knowledgeable themselves and, and really mm -hmm. working with the laws and policies in place just to make the best possible outcome. And it's a good segue, Brandon, into my next question, which is for you. Can you tell us about how mold is legislated in the U.S. and you know speak to what we're doing as a foundation to advocate for new laws across the country? Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's an easy answer. Mold isn't regulated in the United States at the federal level. And that means that what we're doing at the state level is the appropriate uh, route so far. So not only did we kickstart this in Ohio with House Bill 251, but now with the foundation and the advocacy uh, initiative, which is one of our four main initiatives that changed the air, um, we've actually been in contact and in, in uh, having meetings with constituents and legislators and staffers in nine states in the U.S. so far, and also in Washington, D.C. Uh, at the federal level, uh, we were able to just go in October with a few other nonprofit organizations to advocate for better oversight mechanisms for privatized military housing, which, of course, mold and water damage is rife uh, within within those homes, unfortunately, but we are making progress and we're really giving attention to this. So um, 
Yeah, so so far uh, we we are in contact with federal legislators and staffers to try to get these agencies such as the EPA, HUD, CDC to start pivoting and focusing more on mold, water damage, other indoor air pollutants. Um, but also we're heavily focusing on the state level and um, working with volunteers for the foundation um, to help demystify the process of uh, reaching out to their representatives and senators in their state to tell their story, tell their family story, and to see if there's any legislative approaches and opportunities like uh, we did in Ohio. And I have to say that House Bill 251 has been a flagship uh, piece of legislation that other states have looked to already uh, to build um, bills and other proposals that they're going to be putting forward. So, so I know we're going to keep hard at work with 251 into the next session, but I can already tell you that, um, you know, that having that political courage, Rep. Miller was huge because I think that that's, that, that was the spark uh, to help other legislators and staffers feel that this is a worthy cause. And it is. And that's all it takes is a spark, right? Yeah. Now, Representative Miller, as you're about to enter your third term in the Ohio House of Representatives, what are some lessons or advice that you can give to our community on how we can engage our elected officials and advocate for this issue? Because it can kind of be a little intimidating, if I'm being honest. And why do you believe it's important for citizens to use their voices and experience to participate and you know engage in our democracy? Well, yeah, that's a, well, that's a loaded question. That one of the things that I would say, yeah, you must. This is, you know, this experiment of democracy that we have here and this amazing republic that's been created allows each state to be able to be that kind of, you know, laboratory, if you were, or center for innovation. And, and if it gets picked up and it works and uh, it's effective, then a lot of other states will take that uh, legislation and try to tweak it to fit the situation in their particular state. Unfortunately, we have the opposite. Sometimes we have um, legislations created for political or ideological, you know, goal, which truly isn't there to help, you know, Ohioans or help fellow Americans in different states. So one of the things that needs to happen is you need to reach out to your, you know, representatives. I mean, your representative is your voice. And if they're not being your voice, they need to be removed. Um, now, of course, you know, sidebar there, gerrymandered, uh, you know, districts makes it a little bit more challenging to remove somebody who's not responsive to constituents. But, but I think that what you need to do is at least, at least reach out to their office. Uh, you can do that by email, you can write a letter, you can call. I recommend all three. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and let your representative know these are the issues that I'm facing. And then if you're advocating for a cause, it's best to try to think about is uh, creating legislation going to help, but also is it going to maybe burden some other industries or areas? Uh, you know, many of the people down in Columbus, uh, it's all about the wallet. It's really not about your health. It's about your wallet. And so... Unfortunately, if different groups out there believe that you're going to put a burden, unnecessary burden on them, uh, an economic burden on them, you're going to get a lot of pushback and expect to get that. And, and Brandon and I have felt that uh, from various groups, uh, you know, even the, the departments that are supposed to be there working for the people may push back because it puts an extra set of expectations, responsibilities uh, on them as well. And they're limited by their budget and they have to go back and ask for more if creating legislation uh, creates uh, new responsibility, new tasks and new oversight, which of course could uh, cost money for the department. So they have to go back to the, to the governor, to the, to, and to the uh, general assembly and say, Hey, I need more money. And that's once again, uh, very difficult to do uh, down in Columbus right now. So I think that you just have to stay with it. You have to keep, um, trying to work with all the interested parties, opponents and the proponents and sit down and figure out, hey, how do we make uh, people's um, exposure to indoor air um, and its quality a, a better experience? How do we clean that up? How do we allow people to, to um, 
to live more healthy. And, and, I, and I'm, I use the argument to them, listen, if people are unhealthy, they're not working. They're not productive. And our state's not productive. And, we're, and our economic driver is sick and is at home or is unhealthy and is not as impactful. And if it's having a cognitive or physical um, disability, uh, disabling uh, impacts, then it could prevent you from you know, getting to work or working at all. And then you become even more expensive than the original bill would have cost. Uh, so I think that you have to be able to advocate uh, whether you're the citizen in Brandon Chapo's uh, position or the legislature in my, uh, legislator in mine, we have to go and advocate uh, to the to the powers that be and say this is why um, this legislation needs to be written and how can we write it in such a way that um, we will all be able be better for it I guess is a you know, kind of a win win you know the old saying uh, try to find a win win yeah I mean that's an important point there is a cost to not doing something right yeah, so absolutely. I'm there's no doubt a skeptic out there so and they might say yeah but can we really make a difference. What would you say to that person? Well, if you don't believe in making a difference and making uh, people's lives better, then probably, I probably shouldn't be in this position. But uh, and those who advocate on different issues are the same thing. They feel passionate about you know, helping improve people's lives. Uh, and if you're not in that position and then maybe you shouldn't be doing what you're doing. I think uh, that's about as easy as a way to sum it up. But I think that right now uh, in just kind of taking a little bit of a turn here. I, I think that uh, House Bill 251 may have some tweaks that needs to be made just a little bit. Um, Brandon and I have talked about those and going into the next General Assembly as we don't see it moving, um, there's not a lot of taste for this uh, bill. Um, and it, for whatever reason, uh, there's a couple groups out there, individuals out there in the legislature just feel that this is going to put too much of a burden on them. And so, uh, unfortunately, we've got to figure out how to um, put that language, put that bill into language that's acceptable and that will do what it needs to do, uh, yet is acceptable and, and doesn't create burdens for others uh, throughout the state. And, you know, I would add, Representative Miller and Brandon, what you're doing, like, you are a perfect example of a citizen who decided that there was a problem and reached out. You, you are a beautiful inspiration of the process and, and how it's working and moving forward to make change so that it's better for the people of Ohio. So if you're listening and you're somewhat skeptical, this is proof, okay? Things can happen, things can change. So yeah. That, yeah. And so, I'd, I'd just like to add in on that, Kendra, yeah. if, I, if I could. I mean, I, I want to remind uh, the listeners here, I had no previous experience in reaching out to my legislators before. I just used the contact method, called, emailed, set a meeting, and House Bill 251 uh, came to be. We got the ball rolling. We started to educate others on this. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, so I just, just wanted to add that in there. Yeah. So if you slept through your eighth grade social studies class, like, don't worry about it. Like this, this is an accessible process. And actually that's a great segue, Brandon, because you wanted to make this and at, at the foundation, we made this a part a little clearer, a little simpler for people. So it wasn't quite so overwhelming. So if somebody is listening and they want to find out more resources or they want to help uh, change the air, advocate for new laws, maybe in their state, what can they do and how can you support them? Yes. First and foremost, uh, come to the, our website, changetheairfoundation.org. Go to the Take Action tab. There's a policy and advocacy sub tab. Visit us there. You'll find uh, a few resources that the foundation has put up uh, showing what laws or lack thereof there, there are uh, regarding mold and water damage in your state. We have an interactive map. We have another um, uh, Excel spreadsheet from the Environmental Law Institute there that you can you can review. And then the other thing is, is that you'll see which states that we're already advocating for. So you can hop on board with us already for some of those initiatives. And if you see that your state is blank, reach out to us via the volunteer um, messaging method or contact us. And what we'll do is we'll set a meeting, uh, you and I, 
and we'll talk about your experience. And just like we stated before, we'll demystify the process. We'll make it comfortable. Uh, part of my uh, mission in this was to try to make democracy more reachable for people again. I always felt there was a divide uh, between folks and government, but as Representative Miller aptly stated, like your representative is your voice and your voice is powerful and your experiences are powerful. And those are the seeds of change uh, that these legislatures across the country have wanted to hear. I mean, I've talked to numerous of them now and that's, they wanna hear your story. They, 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 they are moved by this. So come to the website, reach out to us. We'll set a meeting, view our resources and we'll get the ball rolling. Thank you so much for that, Brandon and Representative Miller for joining us today. I, I really, look to your story. It's so inspiring. Um, as someone who, you know, wouldn't even know where to start, I, I love that you two have kind of blazed the trail for people. And I would encourage you if you're listening, even if you're not sure um, that you want to get involved, head on over to changetheairfoundation.org because it's worth knowing what laws are or in more likely scenario aren't in place in your state. Um, because like me, I assumed falsely a long time ago that there were, you know, procedures, laws, policies in place protecting me and my family. And that just wasn't the case where we live. So thank you again for joining us and we'll see y'all next time. Thanks, Kendra. Thanks, Glad Kendra. to be here.